Coming up, I'll be showing you 14 free programs in various categories you'll wish you knew about earlier. All software mentioned are available for Windows computers, with the majority also available for Mac OS and Linux. With 14 to get through, let's get to it. First up is XNView MP. This is not the standard image viewer. It supports more than 500 file formats and includes a ton of useful features. It has flexible batch processing, tools to keep your photos organized, and its photo editor allows you to easily resize and crop, provide simple adjustments to contrast and brightness, and you can also apply effects and filters to improve your image. In the main window, when you double click on any image, it will open up in a new tab. This is where you can edit your photo. There's a bar at the top with the primary tools with additional tools in the various menus. XN View MP is completely free for personal use. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you've been looking for an alternative to Microsoft Office, you have many choices. A few I've recommended in the past include LibreOffice, the free Office suite from Google, WPS Office, and many others. A strong contender to those I mentioned I highly recommend is Only Office. With no affiliation to OnlyFans, this open source Office Suite claims to be 100% compatible with Microsoft Office formats. In the testing I've done, there are only some minor issues with images, but other than that, it was nearly perfect. To get the free edition of Only Office for your computer, go to download here at the top. You'll see editions here that are geared towards businesses and developers. Select desktop and mobile apps. You'll now see the download options for Windows, Mac, and Linux. With the program opened, this is what their alternative to Microsoft Word looks like. If you work with spreadsheets, this is their Excel alternative. And for presentations, this is their PowerPoint alternative. If you've used Microsoft Office before, you'll notice the familiar looking ribbon at the top that contains many of the same features and functions. If you're a Windows user, then you already know that their search function is not very good. Everything is a program I've used for years to quickly find files and folders on my computer. It's simple to use and low on system resources. When you open the program, it will initially display every file and folder on your computer. Just start typing in the search box and it will limit what is displayed to find what you're looking for immediately. It's my humble opinion that this program should be built into the Windows operating system to become the default search tool. Everything is completely free and it's supported by donations from users. If you're using Adobe Acrobat Reader and want more features, Foxit Reader just might be what you're looking for. It's great for creating PDFs from common file formats with tools for collaboration built in. It also makes it easy to sign documents either in your own handwriting or by using e-signature. Foxit Reader utilizes the familiar looking ribbon at the top, which includes their handy PDF sign feature. Foxit Reader is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Problem with free and open source video editing software like Shotcut and Kaden Live is that they lack many of the high end features most professionals need. Olive is looking to change all that. It's a new nonlinear free and open source video editor with the goal of becoming a fully featured alternative to the big hitters like Vegas Pro, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. At this time, Olive is still in early development with new features being added every month. Over the past few weeks in testing, I've encountered bugs and have wished that certain features were available at that moment. With that being said, even in its current state, Olive is already one of the best open source video editors I've used and could potentially be a game changer for those people that don't want to shell out the big bucks for an expensive program. Olive is still in the alpha phase, so it's not recommended for serious work at this time. I can attest it's getting better with each new update. Most recently, that was in December of 2024. If you'd like to try it out, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you're a programmer, Visual Studio Code is a powerful source code editor developed by Microsoft. What makes it great is that it's packed full of useful features for developers and now includes a free tier of Copilot, Microsoft's AI coding assistant. Its IntelliSense code completion feature speeds up the process of coding by helping to complete the code text along with function definitions. It also has a huge database with hundreds of installable extensions to import new languages, debuggers, and themes. When you launch Visual Studio Code for the first time, you'll notice the default theme is dark. To change it, 
Go to settings in the lower left and select color theme. You'll now have several light and dark themes to choose from. My personal favorite is Abyss. Visual Studio Code was created by Microsoft, so of course it's available for Windows. You can also get it for Linux and Mac. If you're looking for a free alternative to Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape is what you want. This free and open source vector graphics editor is feature filled to create scalable logos, icons, and illustrations. It includes a wide set of tools for object creation and manipulation. Its primary file format is SVG and is compatible with JPEG, PNG, PDF, and many others. When you open Inkscape, you'll find most of the tools you'd ever need along the left with additional tools here on the right. And you'll see the color bar located here at the bottom. It does have a high learning curve, so I'd recommend checking out the tutorials on their website to get more familiar with the program. Inkscape is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and they even provide the raw source code. I recommended a few password managers to you all in the past. Earlier this year, Bitwarden became my password manager of choice. Not only is it free for personal use, it's also open source and easy to use. Your passwords are stored in your own personalized vault that can be accessed anywhere from just about any device. The data stored on the Bitwarden servers is encrypted, so no one from their team can even see or read your real data. To avoid showing the miscreants my real information, I've created this fake Bitwarden account. When you launch the program, you'll see your Bitwarden vault. Selecting any account listed will give you additional information. It lets you copy your username, password, and website URL, toggle the visibility of your password, and you can check to see if your password has been exposed in any data breaches. If you need to make any changes, just hit the edit icon here at the bottom. I just went over a few of the basics. You can find additional help on the Bitwarden site. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, along with extensions for most of the popular browsers, and they have apps for both iOS and Android. Rufus is a free and open source utility for Windows 7 or newer that will turn an ISO into a bootable USB drive. If your system crashes, it lets you perform a system rescue, recover data, and even lets you work on a computer with no operating system installed. In addition to the ISOs for Windows, Rufus also works with several ISOs for Linux, including Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and many others. For ISOs with most operating systems, you should be able to find them online. For example, if you have a license for Windows 11, you can download the Windows 11 disk image directly from Microsoft to create a bootable USB flash drive. I'll put a link to this page in the description. To save 45 minutes of time in this video, if you're interested in Rufus, there are helpful tutorials on YouTube that will teach you how to use it. I've tested several VPNs over the years, and Proton VPN is one of only a few I've used with a free tier of service that doesn't suck. It's actually really good. Some of you may be familiar with or using the Swiss-based encrypted email service Proton Mail, which has been gaining popularity over the last couple of years. Proton VPN is from those same people. Unlike most free VPNs that have data caps, with the free tier of Proton VPN, you get unlimited bandwidth, so you can use it as much as you want. There are no ads, and because it's based in Switzerland, it's protected by Swiss privacy laws. The only downsides are that you're limited to one device with three locations to choose from, and the speed is not the greatest. For security reasons, I can't show you the interface, but if you'd like to try it out, it's available for the three major operating systems with mobile apps for both iOS and Android. Audacity is a well-known free and open source audio editor and recorder. It's used by many professionals, including those that produce podcasts, and it's also easy to use for beginners. In addition to the standard recording and editing options, it features multi-track mixing with sample rates up to 96 kilohertz with 32 bits per sample, and plugins can be added to enhance its functionality. Don't let its outdated interface fool you, it's still a powerful program. You'll find the primary tools here at the top to edit your audio. It's updated on a regular basis and available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you ever need to convert any video format from one type to another, it doesn't get any better than the free and open source transcoder, Handbrake. Some of you may have heard me talk about Handbrake before. It's great for converting a large video file into a smaller format, ripping DVDs and Blu-rays, and it will take those unusual, lesser used video types and convert them into a format that's more recognized. 
For this example, I'll convert an MKV file into an MP4, which is a more widely supported file type. You have the choice to open a single file or choose more than one from a folder. You can also drag a file or folder from your computer. In this case, I'll drag an MKV file from off screen into the main window. It will automatically detect the file's information, including that video's resolution. For the preset, I usually leave it on the default, which is Fast 1080p 30. Go to the Video tab, set the video codec to H.264, and use the one that's first in the list. For frame rate, I'll leave it at 30. Below that, do not leave it on peak frame rate, which in other words is the variable frame rate. This has been known to cause issues. Change it to constant frame rate. Go to the audio tab, make sure the codec selected is AAC. In the lower right, click on browse, choose the location for your saved file and give it a name. Click on save. When you're ready, here at the top, click Starting Code and wait for it to finish. Depending on the file type you're working with, you might want to try adjusting the other settings. Handbrake is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you need to do an analysis of the hardware on your computer, HW Info is what I recommend. It provides extensive information about your hardware and includes real-time system monitoring. Depending on how you have it set up, you'll have a separate window with your system summary of your key components. If you don't need this window, you can close it out or move it. Along the left, selecting any component will give you additional information to the right. HW Info is only available for Windows with the standard installer and two portable options, including one for DOS. Revo Uninstaller Free does what you'd expect. It removes programs from your computer you no longer need, along with the junk that sometimes gets left behind by a program's own uninstaller. To remove a program, select it from the list and click on Uninstall. It will create a system restore point, then proceed with the uninstall process. I'll check the box to delete the user data, then click on Uninstall. I'll ignore this window and click on Uninstall. And then yes. And when that's done, you can have it scan your system to look for leftover files, folders, and registry items. There are three scanning modes. Move your cursor over each one to get more details. I usually leave it on moderate, then click on scan. If it finds leftover items, you have the choice to select those items individually or select all. After you've chosen the items to remove, click on delete. In the pop-up, click on yes. There's additional items here, so I'll select all of these. Click delete again, yes, and that's it, we're done. With certain programs, there may be some items that are not removed until you restart your computer. The free plan will be all that most people will need. If you want additional features, Revo Uninstaller Pro costs around $25. Thanks for watching. Links are in the description. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What free programs do you use on your computer? Let us know about them in the comments. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our newest software videos and other tech-related stuff.